Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of the Juicy Broads Live Pen Show. This week, we have a very special guest. Hello, Brian. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm happy to be here. Good We're so happy you, that Lori. you're here. I know it's like the Brady Bunch when we have <laughs> it's people, like you don't know where to look and yeah, we're I'm usually Brian. I'm Brian. yeah <laughs> Brian is here he's the guest of honor today hi Carmen yes. Elizabeth Claire hello everyone finally yes. able to join you today. finally Claire just got back from the pen show we had a lot of friends who went last week hi Carmen um, I had a couple oh hey Coco. Hi, yes. I'm Connie. Yes. How are you? She, Connie she, was saying how to be joining today to Whoa. be here that you were here. Mm -hmm. Do I have to share my chair? With you? How could you not be excited that Brian's on the show? I mean, well, who doesn't I'm like Brian? Guy. But Connie, Connie must be exhausted. Like she had this giveaway this weekend, and it was, I think, overwhelmed her a bit. It was uh, pretty exciting. Connie so, gave away the white SD, did she not? Yes, we announced the winner today. And, oh, uh, fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. How many people yeah. entered? A couple thousand, I think. I bet, I bet. Yeah, it was it was very active. Can, we, a guys, can we take a moment here? I just want to set the mood real quick for, for this. Just, there we go. It's kind of easy. Perfect. I just want to make sure this show starts out right, you know, so. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, we needed that. Yes. We really like to set the phone here. Yeah. Just a candle over here for you guys. Just a little Kenny G magic for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Kenny G. I, I, that's not what I meant to put up. I meant to say that Claire had fun with you at the show, Brian. Uh, yeah, the show was terrific. It was it was it was a lot of fun, actually. I mean, it was pretty active from from go. Friday Friday was perhaps one of the busier days, one of the busier Fridays. Oh, really? Of the and show. Yeah. Because usually it's like Saturday is like when everybody kind of shows up and all the chaos comes. Mm. And yeah. All the no, fun. the chaos. The chaos began early. Um, we were expecting rain that weekend and people flooded in on Friday. I don't, I'm not sure if people work anymore. I don't think they do. Yeah. I think they, yeah. they, they look for the time to go to pen shows and yeah, Fridays are like a weekend. It's, it's kind of strange. That's so, crazy. Huh. But, but I especially don't. feel like Mondays and Fridays are definitely, you know, people are accessible because if they are going into the office, it's probably Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Yeah. That makes Friday sense. Place, right. Yeah. We have a lot of friends here. Uh, Julia, yes. she's got her Astrobrook Rocky Top ready to roll. One of my favorites. Oh, that's that is a good one. For that sure. That's a very nice one. It is that's beautiful. A, that would be a rare one now, wouldn't it? That one's a couple years old. So that one is pretty rare. You know, uh, to give a little insight. You know, when we first started this, we didn't have a diamond cast pen. We just had like traditional pens. We started with tortoise blue and black. And um, we met Tim McKenzie, I think, in 2019. And then we started making pens. At the, I guess it must have been like 2020 when we had the first sparkle. And then that kind of rolled, rolled into Rocky Top. But we were pretty much at that time just a domestic company. We were just mm -hmm. selling pens in the United States. So these pens, you know, now we're in 46 countries just a few years wow. later. Wow. So you can imagine all those people, they start to look into the archives. They find Peacock and Rocky Top. And then they're just looking around to see where they can mm -hmm. find them. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely one of the rare ones. I love Rocky Top. I do too. It's one of my favorites. I got lucky. There was a store in Cambridge um, called, I can't even think of it right now, Bob Slates in Cambridge, Mass. Oh, yeah. And sure. I happened to be in there and they had it in the case and it was on sale. They had found some in the back room, like overstock of it <laughs> that they they didn't realize they had. And I was relatively new and I was like, oh my gosh, what's this? It's beautiful. So I went home because I, I, I usually just like to do my research online yeah. and it was so expensive everywhere online because it was all the secondary market for the most part. And then so I went back there and I picked it up and it's one of my favorites. It's so beautiful. It was is. yours, did you get the oversize or the standard size? I got the standard size. My only oversize oh. is my candy that I got at Apple Boom in Boston. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I kind of like candy's the best one. So. 
I kind of like that our secondary market is more expensive than on sale somewhere, right? Isn't that crazy? Oftentimes you find, you know, somebody will release a pen and then you can go and get it at a discount, you know, 30 or 40% off, you know, six months later. I'm thankful that that doesn't happen to Estabrook and people can actually appreciate their collection because mm -hmm. we're not having these big sales, you know, um, even with the white, which we'll talk about, you know, this is a pen that people are excited to have. And, and we don't want to find that, you know, two, two months later that it's on sale and everybody's like, hey, you know, that's disappointing. I just bought yeah. this thing at full retail and right. you know, now it's on sale somewhere. Yeah, that's that that limited kind of excitement that a limited edition piece generates. Um, yeah, before we, we go too yeah. far down, I feel yeah. like we should actually properly introduce Brian. Yes. Um, or he can say a little bit about where he's from. Brian is with Kenro Industries and Esterbrook Pens. For those of you who may not know, I will let Brian um, do the intros. Brian, you were in New Jersey or New York? Oh, Long Island. Yeah, we're Long based Island. in okay. Mineola, Thanks. Long Island. We've been in Mineola for 30 years. And uh, wow. I'm one of the uh, partners, owners. I'm really in marketing, but the hat changes all the time. Mm -hmm. And the parent company uh, here is Kenro Industries. And Kenro has been a distributor of fine writing for over 30 years. And so um, we're kind of, I mean, we're not, we're, we're new at this, you know. <laughs> um, but we've been representing brands like Aurora, Monte Grappa, Omas, Schaefer uh, for as many years, uh, mm -hmm. specializing in the jewelry market, fine pen market. And we've seen kind of the, the changes in the fine writing business over these years. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, in 2018, we acquired the brand Estabrook, which was which was really a dormant company at the time. There was a gentleman who was selling pens with the Estabrook name, but I don't think he was doing it the way we're doing it now, with a lot of integrity, building through the community and quality. Um, so we bought the brand in 2018. We started our journey, and you know, just a few years later, we are exporting to many countries, and uh, the brand is growing to a point where. Our factories haven't been able to keep up and we're struggling and there's been a lot of pains with the growing, but I guess they're good pains, you know, we're That's figuring a good problem out. To have. Yeah, it's definitely I tell that to our distributors. They're, they're, not, <laughs> they're not really excited about it, but um, yeah, we're very pleased with the, where the brand is going. And uh, yeah, so we're excited to, uh, to be part of, to, to own something of our own and yeah. also to continue doing on the dis distributor side. You know, we love our partners. We love our brands that we represent. They're kind of like families, you know, between Monte Grappa and Aurora. And um, yeah, so I've been wearing the Estabrook hat a bit more these mm -hmm. days, you know, and building the brand through product and marketing and uh, social media. But um, yeah. So that's what makes Estabrook special is it's your baby. You actually own that and you're a distributor for the other brands that you mentioned. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Well, that and, and Brian is kind of a marketing genius. All these ideas that you see, all the cool imagery and, and all the cool projects, that's coming from this guy right here. Okay? It's, a team. it's definitely a team effort. Uh, yeah, I have ideas and we make them come to life, but it's, yeah. a, it's a pooled effort. We meet every day. Uh, we have people going to all the pen shows. We have people traveling to to do shop, to do these uh, trunk shows like you met Ryan at Drum Ghouls and, and some other places. So we pull the ideas, we build the energy, and then ultimately um, we put it into a little bit of my machine. And, you know, we uh, we generate these interesting products that thankfully people have uh, have adored for the last couple oh, of years. Oh, yeah. People are excited. They're, I've, I don't think I've ever seen people so excited about a pen brand before yeah, like Esterbrook, people get very excited about it. I think so too. We are going to do our pen, our bag, and our everyday carry, but I these are questions that I'm sure a lot of people are who are here are curious about. And we've talked on the show before, Brian, about you know how you guys made a black pen so freaking exciting with the Raven. <laughs> And now you're doing it again with a white pen. And there are other black and white pens in our yeah. community that people adore. But what do you think it is about Esterbrook that makes you stand out um, with a black pen, for example, or a white pen that gets people so excited that we're like pre-ordering and jumping over each other to get to yeah. these pens before they sell out? What is it about Esterbrook? 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's been through the journey of the brand. And if, if you don't mind, I can go back and essentially tell you, you know, how we saw the future and, and fine writing. No, that's what we want to hear. That's what we're I, here for. I remember being at one of the pen shows um, kind of pre-Instagram. And I was at the show and looking over. And, and in, at that time, the majority of the consumers were men. Mm-hmm. You rarely saw women at pen shows. Uh, maybe they were working a table or there was a woman who was coming with her husband to prevent him from buying that next limited edition. She'd hit him over <laughs> the head and say, no, you don't need another pen. Um, mm-hmm. And I looked over and everyone in the room had had gray, white hair. And I was concerned there really weren't young people coming to the show either. And I was concerned because this was the industry I was in and I was wondering where it was going. And so just a few years uh, post that, you know, Instagram came out and Instagram afforded us the opportunity to build our interest through a community. And I remember early on, I was going out, taking pictures of where I was and inviting people to, to connect with me. And I did that through my account, New York Pen Guy. And I was going to different shows and really sharing where I was going and what I was doing. It could have been at Basel World, it could have been at Monte Grappa or Aurora, taking behind the scene videos of you know, what they were doing in the process of make, and we started to grow. And so I became pretty savvy at connecting through this social platform. And I started to even teach the brands, like you need to do this, you need to like try this because if you can connect with people, you can convince them to promote through this same platform. And then it became something. So when we took on Estabrook in the early days, I knew that this was a vehicle that could benefit us. You know, mm-hmm. I felt like we could build community through it. And I knew that there were talented people on the platform that could help us through this journey and who would be passionate about helping us through this journey. Vanessa, you're one of them, right? I mean, we started this early and oh, your yeah. creativity was incredible. Uh, we talked about Rocky Top. You held us, helped us create those beautiful signs, really interesting yeah. to do the storytelling through the products. Mm-hmm. And we didn't just come out with a new pen. We tried to come out with a pen with a story and build that story through the community and through artists who wanted to support the Estabrook world. And I'll tell you, like really early on, I remember speaking with a woman who I thought was really talented. And she was living in the UK. She, she traveled there from India and she was studying. And at the time she had this Instagram account and she was working at McDonald's just to try to find her way. And ultimately she became this big marketing person at this big pharma company. But at that moment I was like reaching out to her. She had, you know, a couple of hundred accounts, but she was really talented. And I spotted it and I said, what you're doing is really incredible. We would love to have you work with us. And she did our little stickers. If you have ever seen like the Estabrook typewriter sticker or her name was AK Wrights. And I don't, I haven't, I've lost touch with her since, but she helped us create those little symbols. And that was like the first energy. So with Estabrook, we started, we created this momentum in the industry through the community, through artists. And I remember even when I uh, reached out to AK, she told me she was crying because she couldn't believe that a company was reaching out to her to work with her. And I think it was that moment and the next moment and the next moment. For us, I wasn't always reaching out to the person with a million followers or 100,000 followers. I really didn't care. Like if you were talented and you were passionate about writing and, and just being involved in community and wanting to be part of what we were doing and building not only escort but also the fountain pen community, because I think it's pretty amazing, the people who are part of our community. I mean, if you go to a pen show, there's just like, we just welcome everyone. Yes, come over, hang out. And we just give love and we're so appreciative. There's so much love in this community. I I would agree. Yeah, absolutely. So we've built these little momentum moments for the brand. And I think with like a pen like the Raven, the Raven was just this black pen. Quite honestly, it caught us by surprise. We didn't know it was going to be as popular as it was, but Mm -hmm. we were also worked with a creator to help us build the story. We could have named it anything, but we named it Ravens. And quite honestly, people don't love Ravens. Like they don't even want to have them outside their window because they're they're concerned that they're they're going to send off some signal. 
Oh yeah, there's like a superstition involved with it, right? Yeah. But, but the timing was great too because that was in October, September, October release. Yeah. And you had the artwork, yeah. that one with the blotter paper, and yes, it was. The idea was that's that. the magic. Yeah, we, I know we Ooh, use these. Before. Gorgeous. Yeah, I think she's here, Anne. Are you? Yeah. The artist. Oh, is Anne here? here? Oh my so goodness! Thanks, so. Hi, Anne. So Welcome. She is such a talent. These are beautiful. Um, but yeah, these are her designs. And I just, and I'm so impressed just, by her. Like, mm -hmm. Vanessa, when I would work with you, I would kind of give you the idea of what I was thinking around the pen, you know, and mm -hmm. even with the Rocky Top, you know, we talked about, you know, this, this or gold rush, the journey of going west. Yeah. And, and I would send you pictures and she would create <laughs> and interpret it so beautifully. It's the same with Anne. I was like, Anne, yeah. you know, the, Halloween's coming. We're introducing this black pen. The name is the Raven, and she interpreted it beautifully. And she people just really did. With it. You give them yeah, the freedom so to well. create. Oh yeah. yeah, Brian is not a micromanager either. Like he's so easygoing about it. And I've I always felt like whenever I work with you to create artwork, um, like he just gets excited about the ideas, and he's very. Um, it's just a very positive interaction. So you're mm -hmm. actually one of my favorite. God, I'm not here. I'm not kissing your ass. This is not like a kiss your ass moment. <laughs> I'd be, be I'm just being completely honest here that Brian, I you're one of my favorite people to work with when it I comes to that. these collaborations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I enjoy working with you as well. You know that we've done a lot <laughs> together over the last few years for sure. And your interpretations are always on point. So oh, geez, stop. It's, it's been great. <laughs> Uh, Stop, keep going. So, <laughs> so with the Raven, it caught us by surprise. We introduced a button fill that one that was linked to it also. So you mm -hmm. were able to uh, fill it from the uh, internal mechanism within the pen. So I think that added to it as well. Um, but the white is a completely different situation because the white was just part of um, a series of prototypes that we had manufactured. And then we would have these prototype sales for products that we weren't planning to go forward with. And so we put it into a prototype sale. We sold out. Connie, who's, who was on the call, Connie yeah. says, Brian, do you have another one of those white pens? I love it. And the thought in the office and the conversation around this white pen was white pens don't sell. Like <laughs> people in, in past years, we found from some of the other brands that the white pen was the least favorite and it really mm -hmm. never sold. Like it was always the black, the green, the red, um, you know, some other exciting colors, but white didn't perform. And maybe that's because the majority of people who were buying fountain pens during that time were men. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it, it was a different time. Pen shows, we were selling blue and black. You'd go into mm -hmm. Farney's in Washington, DC, very conservative crowd, white and I'm sorry, black and blue would sell inside their store. Um, but now it's a, it's a different arena and these amazing stationary pages and scrapbook pages and blogger pages, they're really wonderful. And so Connie, I said, of course, I have one other one. It's alpha photography. When it comes back, I'll send it to you. Connie puts it on her page. All of a sudden, everybody's like, what's with this white SD? How do I get that white SD? And then I felt it in the company and I'm telling everybody, I think we need to make this pen. And they're like, ah, it's white. I'm like, but look, look what's happening. They're sharing it like it's taking on a life of its own. And then we, we ordered one quantity. And then we're like, that's not going to be enough. Like people are asking for us. Now we have retailers calling us and we don't have this pen. We're not even thinking wow. about making this pen. Wow. And so it was the storm <laughs> from the community that forced our hand. And now we've introduced it. Uh, we had our pre-sale. We're completely sold out. Like we couldn't even wow. put the button fill on our website because our retailers were so upset that we weren't able to deliver the quantity that we thought we were going to, going to be able to. So there's another batch that's going to come in in April, but for now we're completely sold out. Like wow. Atlas, do you guys know Atlas, right? So yeah. Atlas ordered, then came back with another order and we're like, no, like a significant order. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I pre-ordered mine on Atlas. Oh, did you? Really as soon as it went live, I, yeah, I pre-ordered oh, Thank it. you. We no, my pleasure. That. My pleasure. No, I, I do agree because I came into the fountain pen community through the planner community. And 
I, I've been in the planner community kind of on and off for several years, but when I started to see some of my favorite people like Helen from Coffee's Monster Co Coffee Monster Co. Um, talk about fountain pens, I was intrigued. And then I discovered like Yoseka's website, uh, their YouTube channel before I realized they were a store and okay. it, it just kind of snowballed. And now I feel like there are like my fountain pen friends on Instagram and then my planner friends. And a lot of my planner friends have, they like the aesthetic of like the lights and the creams and the champagne and like all of the, that's why that um, platinum chai 3776 shape of heart. That was another one. People went berserk mm -hmm. over myself included. Mm -hmm. And it's a super neutral light pen. Um, so I, I definitely think you tapped into the women in this community with the white and just with your marketing in general. And that is actually was one of the reasons I approached Vanessa about starting this broadcast because I felt like there weren't enough voices from women in our community. Um, yeah, does that make does that make Brian like the lady whisperer? <laughs> <laughs> Not sure, it's it's funny though. <laughs> Our our German distributor, who we've known for many years, we know him, we go back 30 years with him because he represented Aurora. Now he represents Monte Grappa. And mm -hmm. he would tell us, Brian, people don't want yellow pens. People don't want honeycomb. <laughs> and in the very early on, I was working with uh, the paper Tina from the paper Voyager, uh, Marique from me and my happy desk, Anne mm -hmm. is from Germany. And I would show him on my Instagram account and I would say, Look at these women. They're, they all want the honeycomb. They all want the sunflower. These are the pens that they want. They're German. They're all from Germany. And he was like, I don't know. I don't know. And so, uh, yeah, he started to change his tune. And he's he's ordering a lot of white. I bet. Wow. Well, it is interesting because part of what you do is with all of the marketing. And that is really what a lot of these stationary planner accounts do, too. They, they present the pens in such a way that it looks so beautiful next to a certain planner and next to a certain washi tape and stickers, the presentation, uh, Connie is a genius with this. I mean, her mm -hmm. layouts Incredible. are absolutely beautiful. And every, you know, I could just like scroll, I, I could kill hours looking through Connie's Instagram account because it's so yes, beautiful, yeah. you know? And, yeah. and I do like if, if sometimes if you just look at the pen alone, it may not do that much for you, but then when you see it with all of the marketing and what it could be and how you could match it with certain ink and put it out there into the community, it takes on a new life. And that's yeah, what she, you're she really like puts it into context, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So Absolutely. but yeah, her, her images, Connie, your images are like poetry. They're just, they really they're are. so beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. Connie, what is that? I, I know you have it in your Instagram, but it's like a little horizontal notebook with like little, I want to say three or four spots. Uh, above with lines below that you can do almost looks like a comic book format. It's so beautiful. Um, I don't know where that notebook is, but I need to go back and revisit your. Wait, is it? Does it have anything to do with Estherbrook? I don't think so. Then we don't need to talk about it. Oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe Brian can you know look into the Junior Journal and slap Estherbrook. Oh. Yeah, it's put a really sticker cute. on it. <laughs> I really love it. I did order my Esterbrook journal though too, and like that mustardy color, yellow. In fact, yellow. Oh, thank you. Thank That's you. really pretty. <laughs> um, so that is super exciting. Should we shift gears and share some pens and bags? Of course. So th that's what we so do. Is that what we're, we're here for? Twenty-three minutes the into the show. But thank you everybody so much for being here. We have sixty-eight friends with us right now. And um, yeah, one of these days we're going to broadcast later at night. <laughs> Vanessa and I kind of turn into pumpkins after seven o'clock. <laughs> so we tend to do this early, but so true. We probably should do an evening show. But the, the nice thing is that people can revisit this. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Joey. Hey, yeah, Joey. This was like, I saw it. Hey. Lena and Vanessa. <laughs> What's going on? I love hey. my, I'm like saving my journal. I haven't, I haven't dug into it yet because I feel like it's so special. I'm waiting for a special occasion. So Brian, would you like to kick things off and share with us your yes. bag and your Same pen bag. and your everyday carry? Oh, I brought a very special bag today. Okay. It's um, it's my Estherbrook. Oh, oh. <laughs> I love it. I, this... I have that bag too. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna have to get one for Lori for sure. But you know, yeah. this is pretty special to me because I mean Vanessa. 
home run, right? I mean, that was such a, a fun for project. A cola release. I mean, yeah, seriously, but that seriously. was such a fun project too. Amazing job, amazing. One of my favorites. But now I brought my my Tumi backpack, which Love is. It. That's great. Is that like a camo pattern? Yeah, it's a you have to like camo. show us around. You can't just yeah, like. Yeah, you can't just. Oh, sorry. You got to do blue and white. It's got multiple pockets. Nice. Um, it's comfortable. It slides on my, you know, I travel a lot. So it gets yeah. me through the airport. Um, holds my pen cases, my pens. It's got multiple pockets. I know where everything goes. It's like a golf bag, right? Sometimes you put it. it in a pocket and you don't know where it falls. So <laughs> pretty, pretty simple. I got the ones out here for my electronic accessories, my vitamins. Does it have your initials somewhere on it? They do that for free at Toomey. It doesn't, but, you know, I have my, um, yeah, I know they didn't do that for me, but it's got my air tag, you know, if somebody steals Oh, that's, that's it. Which important. I don't know if it's any good anymore because I think then your phone goes off and says there's an air tag with you, right? So I feel like... <laughs> What's, if someone takes it away, if it's far from you, I think you'll be notified. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I am notified. But yeah, the bag looks beautiful Works and the me. backpack looks sturdy. Yeah, it's, kind of, it's kind of, it's you know, it's not too, not too conservative and stiff. Is that you loud? Know, I can wear the piece. Yeah. So, Lau asking about you know what? Since you're here, Lau, and you're asking about that pen. I Brian, you have special to, access to the to Active Farm Green SD. Oh, yeah. That's it. Uh, Vanessa see, has all it. the pens people want. <laughs> Who's asking I have for it? Lau, this is my friend Lau. Lau. wants the Accutron oh. pen. And it's so beautiful, Lau. Look at it sparkling. She's such a tease. You're such a tease, <laughs> Vanessa. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> but you didn't oh. see the new one. There's a new one? Oh. Mm. Really? You maybe, have my, to. maybe my favorite of all, actually. So really, yeah, oh, I have to see see but that. Look at that wow! Look how beautiful yeah. it is. That wow! It is pretty beautiful. Are you going to give us any sneak previews? Because if you are, we need to make sure we get to them before five p.m. when you leave us. That's true. Yeah, I have to do a sprint to the other room to show you that astronaut, but I can grab it for you. Can you run fast? I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> chop chop. Okay, so what pen are you going to share with us today? Yes. We love your bag. I brought a few of them, so I don't know if we have time. It's just to kind of give you a quick overview. Um, some pens that are pretty meaningful for, to me. This That's was a pen that Aurora made back in the day. It, it's made from Machier. Oh, so wow. It was, it's, it was their Talentum. So it was painted, and it was one of the few that was painted like this. Um, mm -hmm. We actually produced the pen, sent them to Japan, and had it finished with this wow. green and gold uh, flaking. It's really beautiful. It's so it was like early in my career, like or really early 2000s. So this has a special place for me. Um, then I have a pen that was misengraved with my name from Omas. So when I worked <laughs> with Omas what does it say, Brian? Does it, is your last name misspelled too? No, the last thing they got right, but the oh, first they, got, name, they did an I instead of a Y. An I instead of a Y, but still, I enjoy it. It was the first time I went to Rome, and this was the gift that they gave us. Wow. This was during a period when the LVMH group, Louis Vuitton, bought the company, mm -hmm. and then we became the distributor for Omas. So wow. it's made from this uh, celluloid material. And it's really beautiful. That's beautiful. It's the Omas 360. It's a shame about your name, though. Yeah, I know. And then the <laughs> one pen that I think is the most important pen in terms of like building community. And it was like really in the beginning of the Instagram time was mm -hmm. the mule. Yeah. And I had this mule engraved by somebody oh, in our community and it was all hand done. Wow. And she, I mean, her work was absolutely stunning. So, that is beautiful. you know, and we used to have mule events, like after the pen shows, we'd get people together and we would have a, you know, we'd have a drink and bring people together after the show. Now that's just like a commonplace thing, people to get together <laughs> after the events. But mm -hmm. I feel like this was like the early start of that. You know, in the States, it's a little bit different than in Europe where we have these weekend pen shows, mm -hmm. you know, you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it becomes more of an event. In Europe, they would just have one day pen shows. Like the, the pen show... Um, in Amsterdam, the Amsterdam pen show is like one of the first that has like all three days or, you know, people are there from Friday to, Friday to Sunday. Um, but 
but the mule was a big deal for me. It's uh, I remember when we first started selling this copper pen, it mm. was like when the young people were starting to come into it and guys with beards and it had like this kind of <laughs> rustic feeling about it. And I was like, Monte Grappa, you, you need to make a copper pen. And then they were concerned that there was going to be a patina. I'm like, no, that's okay. Yeah, people are that's, actually going to appreciate yeah. the fact that there is going right. to be a patina. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would get calls and we would try to like explain to them, no, we're going after a younger person. Don't really be concerned that the one guy is going to complain because younger people are really going to love this pen. And they did. And we, we sold thousands. And I was, still have mine. I've got mine. Like a, I'm not getting it. Like get that really one. really exciting. It's, I've it's never seen that. Pen. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's a great one. You. And then this one I have with me is the uh, the J. So this is that old pen that really people would collect for mm -hmm. Estabrook. Like this is the one you can get on eBay. This is the one that they sold in, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands, millions of pens. And it's very popular. You can get it on eBay for like 50 or $60. I actually bought one this weekend at the show or it was actually gifted to me. Um, but it's cool. We tried to create the J after it. And, um, you know, try to recreate what they were doing during that time. But I think the nib is really, the, the nib's kind of small and it, you know, they, they're, they didn't have tipping. So the mm. pens didn't write as smooth as the, no. the nibs do today because mm -hmm. it was all steel. Today, there's an iridium point, which adds that smoothness, which is actually what those nib meisters shape when you go to a show. That's why we buy a lot of like double broad nibs or even broad nibs, because mm -hmm. then you can actually shape it and mold it. Um, back in the day, this pen just didn't have tipping. It was just a steel nib. And that's why it kind of writes like a nail. Like right. yeah. <laughs> but that's also why they had, so, they had such a variety too. How, yeah. how many different nibs did Esterbrook have back in the day? There seems they say to there was, so they many. Say there was a couple of hundred. Like there were many different nib sizes and each one had a name, you know, and it mm -hmm. went with a profession. You know, if you were a, uh, a teacher, it would be the teacher nib. And then uh -huh. they had many different nibs. And that's what we tried to recreate with our nib program. You know, we offer the standard extra fine through double broad or stub. And uh, then we extended that to the journaler, the scribe, the needlepoint, the techo. And we have a new one coming in. Uh, we, have a, we have a new one coming in May. And I just nice. texted my nib, my nib person, Josh, and I was like, how are those coming along? And <laughs> like, well, I was sick the last three days. And I'm like, oh. I was like, that, well, that's not good. You, chop, chop. You know, so you're talking about JJ Lax? Is he doing yes, it? JJ Lax. Oh, so. okay. All so right. Josh, mm -hmm. He's a good guy. Him. And we're leaning into the community of illustrators with this nib. So we're that's pretty excited. Exciting. About it. That's really yeah. exciting. awesome. Yeah. And then I brought these two guys. Of course. <laughs> oh, look at those. Yeah. So you were Very so nice. funny in the episode when Vanessa called you. That was just. Yeah. The timing was great. I loved it. Yeah. Well, he knows when I call, he has to answer. So I answer. Just... There's a reason. There's a reason. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you were in the middle of the show. That's for sure. Well, you know, we like to keep it spontaneous around here. <laughs> Anything can happen. <laughs> well, those were great. I love those. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Thank you for yeah, show and tell. I'm looking to seeing your fun. bags. I have a silly bag today. You have yeah. a silly. Let's see it. Well, a okay. Silly bag. <laughs> it's actually a vase. That is a bag. Do you see this? You can oh, carry wow. it like this. Wow. I saw this on Instagram and I thought it was the cutest thing. Maybe so that is very it's cool. It's yes, it's a vase. So I have like a little greenery in here. But the reason I put it in here was because I wanted to talk about my botanical garden pen that's inside oh. my little case here. So wow. isn't this so cute? It was just it on is very fun. cute. Yeah. I thought it was lovely. I might need um, one of those. Really fill yeah. that up too. You can do so like much that. with this. You, you can, know how many uh, lipsticks can fit in there? Seriously? <laughs> yeah. You can put jelly beans in here for Easter. Make Jell it look oh, like an Easter yeah, basket. That would be cute. You, you know, you so see cute. whatever you're carrying. So it's so adorable. That's and a lot of yeah, jelly beans. This has like a little blue <laughs> into it. I hunted for it. There there are different ones and it's all glass. Isn't that so much fun? That's very cool. So cool. We have to bring this to the Juicy Broad Show to share. Absolutely. So I started doing this thing with my morning pages because I, I do like a little entry every morning and that's where I get to like use a lot of like different inks in my notebook. 
Um, so I decided this month that for 10 days straight, I was only going to use one brand. So March one through 10, I used my Leonardo pens just, just for fun. Cause I, you know, I ink everything up. I don't really give myself too many rules, but I would keep them in here because I have like about six pens from that brand. And then, so 11 through 20 are all of my Esterbrook pens. So I put my, my Esterbrook SDs in here and I just inked up my um botanical garden oh it's in my other case here i'm making a liar out of myself i inked up my botanical garden with uh robert lewis stevenson it's like a golden color and that's what i love about the botanical garden is that there are so many different colors in that pen but in here i have all of my sds and so that i with with the exception of that one which was supposed to be the one that was in here but then I can use these every morning and they all have different nibs. Like this is the one I got in Orlando with my journaler's nib. This is my only specialty one. And then the Rocky Top from Bob Slates. The Lilac I got on the secondhand market before I knew it was a big deal. Um, I was able to snag this and then people were like, where did you get that? So I got lucky, but then you re-released this. So I know a lot of people were happy. Is this sold out again or is this going to be part of the line? No, it's sold out. Yeah, it's sold out. I figured that would be quick. And then my candy, my Vanessa, this is my oversized that I got at Apple Boom. I got this at a pen show, the honeycomb that nobody was going to like, Brian. I love wow. it. And then my Raven, of course, and I got the button fill. So that's what I'm doing. So every morning I am pulling out my Esterbrook Estes and now I have my white one on the way. So I do love my Esther Brooks. Wow. We appreciate you. Thank you for oh, gosh. your loyalty. Wow. That's a nice collection. And do you, you know the backstory on the candy? Um, I don't know that if Vanessa has ever really shared. I know she did the work for it. So tell us the yeah, backstory. It was, uh, it was like one of our early contests on Instagram. Oh, we asked like people to create ago. the SD that they would love to see. And it took us a couple of years to kind of recreate it. But in the end, yeah, it was uh, that inspiration of just putting those colors together that forced our hand and, you know, we put it together and it was really exciting. People like, people like the candy. It was a little it's shocking. Crazy. Yeah. You know, I, would, I, I remember presenting it to our distributors in Spain, it was a little <laughs> more conservative. And they said, wow, Brian, you're crazy. Who's going to buy this thing? And then everybody, everybody, <laughs> everybody. Yeah. So much fun. Well, Vanessa is bold and she's, you know, that's why. I think it's great that that was you had your there your hand one. in that one too. Would you ever consider doing another contest for an SD? Yeah, we uh, yeah That'd we would fun. consider. Yeah. Oh, oh, you mean to create to design an SD? Yes, to like oh, design yeah. an SD, like a yeah, concept. That'd be fun. We should do that again. We I love getting again, input yeah. from the community and seeing what people are thinking because yeah. the trends are always changing. I mean, I remember during COVID everything that was exciting and sparkly that you could put into your Instagram to get people enthusiastic around it. That's what, what, what was hot. But mm. you know what you design today is very different. Like even some of the colors that I see in our future, they're a bit more subdued earth tones. Really? Um, yeah. Oh, and, wow. and, I, and I feel like we are, we're trying to encourage some of those masculinities to, to come out. Some of the men to like, Come on over. This is not just about, you know, women who are excited about the stationary community. It's also guys. You know, who saw the Raven and now they're coming in and we're getting even like the watch community be a little enthusiastic about that's cool. Esther Brooks. So yeah, we we want to encourage people who are writing with, you know, with um, fountain pens to to come over and take a look at Esther Brooke. And that's sometimes I love the new can be a little bit like, ooh, those colors are a bit much. <laughs> but so we're just there's something for everybody. Better. Yeah. There's something for everyone. <clears throat> That's interesting. All right, Miss Vanessa, you're up. Oh, yes. Okay. So the bag that I've been carrying this week is a lovely pink Manser Gavriel bucket yeah. bag. Love that brand. It looks so, like a vase. Is it a vase? No, it's a bucket bag. <laughs> but it could be a vase. I could put a bunch of stuff nice. in it, I guess. Very nice. The so, leather. yeah, it's got the Safiano leather. Um, okay. The inside is coated. So it actually is coated enough. Like if I were to spill water in it, it would be fine. Wow. But I'm not going to try that. Very nice. So, and my pen today is in an Esterbrook canvas case. Mm -hmm. And it is the candy. Oh. Because it's my favorite. So 
This is the oversized candy. And my candy is very special because I installed an 18 karat gold nib in it. Wow. With an ebonite feed. So Ooh, I really beautiful. stepped it up a bit to make Not it. Not messing around. No, no. I wanted this. This is like my, one of my most favorite Estherbrooks. Just, you know, because of the story behind it and the amount of time it took for it to happen. And then when it finally happened, you know, and I got it in the mail, I was like, oh my gosh. Aww. I was so happy. Very so, nice. yeah. But yeah, I'm still was crazy the, about this. Was the manicure intentional? Yes. <laughs> Yes, it was. It always is. Well, we appreciate being in, you know, one of your lead pens and what it means. Yeah. To, it means a lot to us also. And my weapon of the day is a matching knife for the candy. Wow. So it is a pink <laughs> to match it. the candy. So... This could be a nice everyday carry so, for people who like pastel colors. Brian, I keep thinking she's going to run out of knives, but there's always a new knife. Do, do you think colors. she has more knives or bags? Oh, that's a tough one. I, I, you I, know, have, I have a lot of bags. <laughs> I've got a lot of bags. She has that cabinet in back of her that she goes to frequently throughout the show, <laughs> usually to get pens, but there could be bodies in there too. <laughs> Just little but tiny bodies. <laughs> She's got her knives. That's a pretty yeah. one. Yeah, I like it. Nice set. Be careful. Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he wasn't here for the hatchet. I know. I always hard. say, I think for, for those of us in those of us in the Northeast, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I you, this is not like part of my everyday, but we have lots of people in the comments who were like, Oh, I have that knife, or that's a great everyday carry, or you need that. That's it. Whatever works for you. Yeah. And it's nice and sharp. I sharpened it. So. She makes them look really pretty. Awesome. She's good at marketing as well. <laughs> the sharpest thing I have in my house are my ice skates. Oh. Your ice skates my and your brain. Skate. Yeah. That's about it. There you go. Yeah. We have I a sharp that. wit. Mm -hmm. sharp. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I, I had a question for you, Brian. You recently, um, I noticed that Esther Brooks were recently introduced into one of our local stores, the Boston General Store. Yeah. And it, and it was so exciting when I, because I've only, I've only been there twice. And when I went in, um, there were mostly Cavecos. And then in the case towards the, and it's such a cool store. Very cool. And then in the front of the store, I noticed a case with Esther Brooks. And then, then you guys kind of, then it was, I saw it on Instagram and stuff, but how do you go about finding places where you want <laughs> Estabrook to be sold? Uh, France. Say again? <laughs> <laughs> like what? And, yeah. and when they start being sold in France, Brian would like me Honestly, to be the representative for that. <laughs> we're, we're on Long Island. They're based in Massachusetts. Yeah. And I met them in France. Oh, get so, out. <laughs> yes, we were exhibiting at a show called uh, Maison Maison Object, mm -hmm. and we were exhibiting with our new distributor there, who is also the distributor of Traveler's Notebook and some really great Japanese brands, and we're their fine uh, fountain pen brand. So we're we're excited to be part of of, of what they're doing wow. uh, because I think they're in something like. 600 doors between France and Germany, just like Travelers is everywhere. And these small right. Japanese companies are selling in so many doors. So the opportunity was really great. So I went there, we exhibited with them and April and her team came into the booth and we started to talk and they said, how don't we know you? <laughs> and I was like, well, how don't we know you? And so we had this uh, back and forth and and uh, when we came back, we scheduled a time for me to go and visit their shop. And I went in and uh, wonderful place, like vintage and soaps and bags and socks, so cool. and mm -hmm. all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and so, yeah, they're really passionate about like growing their writing category. And so they took on Estabrook. Uh, they added some Schaefer pens also, which okay. uh, were the distributor for Schaefer. Okay. So, um, yeah, and it's going well. We like them a lot. And that's uh, so exciting. We actually recently introduced them to, uh, hopefully they were introduced. We, uh, we're we doing a little thing with uh, the Superior Labor Company. Which ooh, is, uh, ooh. Yeah. It's never a little thing if it's with the Superior Labor. No. It's a little thing. 
Um, yeah, we're going to announce that at the Yoseka. Yoseka. Uh, uh, Yoseka oh, stationary Fest. Event. Yeah, that's going to yes. happen in August. So well, yeah, we'll release you, this. You were recent to Yoseka as well. Uh, recent edition, or have you been there for a while? No, it's fairly new. Um, yeah. But the... The pens really took off. They put them into the store. They said they'll open up the boxes. People were coming in and they were, you know, taking them out of their hands and buying them. And wow. so they've reordered on several occasions. And when they put this event together, we were the first fountain pen company that they reached out to. And they're like, we want you guys at the event and oh. tell us where you want to be and how you're going to exhibit. And yeah, so very cool. that is so we're really looking forward to it. It's going to be a crazy week because that's you know the the weekend of washington dc at the beginning i think it's the yeah. first weekend in yes. august mm -hmm. and then yeah. yoseka is just after that in, in and august. i just looked at the calendar calendar and yoseka is like wednesday thursday friday i don't yeah, know it's, like in, in it's head, during the week i thought they were the weekend so yeah. we only yeah. have like three days to yeah recover. like three days and that's why i'm gonna crash on brian's couch until <laughs> that event happens yeah. my couch is gonna be in brooklyn because we rented an airbnb so yeah we're so uh, vanessa and i were talking we about were actually things. talking about the same thing yeah you guys should you should uh i mean they're going pretty quick, so you guys should definitely mm, get on. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure who's going to be staying at our place. Oh, know, it's me. It's I'll be, be staying Carrie at your Airbnb. <laughs> me, Carrie, and Ryan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I just the there's incredible traffic on Long Island. It's impossible to yeah. try to make that commute in the morning and then go home at night. That would be nuts. I couldn't you know, imagine. Are days. you staying in Greenpoint? We're staying in Greenpoint. Right yes. there. Okay, yeah. that's really exciting. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would imagine there's going to be a lot of like after hour get togethers and stuff. Oh yeah. So it's going to be so much fun. I am so excited for stationary fest. Yeah. I think it's Me going to be a lot too. Of fun. It is going to be epic, Julia. With I'm just three, very excited. Four that, C's. Huh? Epic. It's epic with four C's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Epic. <laughs> um, I'm just excited that I don't have to get a, on a plane to go there you know, and in right. future years, I'm sure it's going to continue to be good. So we're working on yeah, getting Vanessa what they're there. Doing is, is really yeah. impressive. W what a company. Um, and I haven't spent any time there. Ryan actually handles the account. Um, my hat has changed. You know, I'm not really visiting accounts like I was in the beginning. I'm not really managing the Instagram like I was, although. I know I, I miss you on Instagram. I still dive in yeah. and take yeah. a look. Same. I don't know who I'm talking to anymore. I know, I'm afraid to comment. Like, not afraid to, but I, w before I used to know it would be Brian, and now you know. In the back in the she early days, Brian too. used to mess with my mind. Brian used to mess with me because I wasn't sure if it was him or not. But he would just like write stuff like, "Who's was like, is that Brian or not?" I like, like firing the out the the sarcasm and a little joke here and there. It's just makes it fun. That's Especially when you don't know where it's coming from. Right. Is it Brian? Is it the, yeah. the, the person behind Esterbrook Instagram now? Yeah, I mean, what, it's... What it's are your new roles Brian. now? What are you doing that's different now that you've stepped out of that? Um, I would say that it's more marketing, uh, branding, and product. Okay. So really living the product. We... Uh, <laughs> sure. Big stuff. Yeah. We, yeah. And... There's some exciting things that are taking place with the brand also. We were recently, um, I was actually trying to connect with them and then they connected with me. And so, um, you know, there's a part of our history includes Charles Schultz and the Peanuts. So we just uh, inked the deal where we're going to have the license for Peanuts products in the future. Cool. It's actually wow. be their 75th anniversary next year. So we're working on some special things that are going to come uh, related to those products. And I'm loving Charles Schultz even more because I'm, I found that, you know, in our last call last week, I was saying how, you know, it was interesting to see Snoopy. You know, Snoopy did everything, right? So right. Snoopy was an ice skater. He played hockey. And then I learned <laughs> that they actually built a rink in Santa Rosa, an ice hockey rink. And Charles Schultz would have a tournament every year. Um, oh. because he was a minor league hockey player. Wow. So, yeah. So I love that. Wow. And that's so very cool. It's becoming more dear to my heart because I'm a big hockey guy and I appreciate that sport very much. White Snoopy SD. Can't wait. This yeah. is going to be really exciting. 
Yeah, and, I, and again, it's, it's more of like American history that you're tapping into, which yeah, is, definitely. is also and I, that's why so I like that. The connection yeah. between American history and Esterbrook being an American brand. I just, I think that's very cool. Yeah, we try to connect even like with the artists. Like we like to work with artists who are American also. Yeah. Um, our Nib Meisters, Vanessa, yeah, you're definitely one of those artists. Um, yeah. yeah, and just kind of connect in. Like even, how do you tell stories about your brand? Like, do people read anymore? I think a lot of it has to be visual and yeah. that's why we did the, you know, the JFK, we had an artist to kind of recreate John F. Kennedy standing there at Rice University speaking about going to the moon and then he inked the deal with an Estabrook. That is so, so cool. How do you tell that story? You know, so we did it through puzzles and events and, you know, activities. That was a fun event. The puzzle event was a lot of fun. Do you know we had 70 something people come down for a, you know, a puzzle contest at the Well, the only, the only thing that kind of sucked about it was the professional puzzle people that came. <laughs> yeah. like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. Yes. Like was, they were like a club. I was managing the Instagram and I remember putting it out there and we did like a local sponsored ad to invite people to come and, you know, participate. They're like, yeah, is it, are, are there still openings for the puzzle contest? And you assume it's just another fountain pen person, right? Who's going to go to the show? They're like, oh yeah, okay, then um, we're going to bring down our team. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> bring your team. I had no idea there were puzzle teams. There's puzzle yeah. teams. Yeah, and they came down, and everyone was sitting at the table, nice, and all being introduced. It's kind of like a networking thing. We put people together, you know, and encourages them to come out of their shell and talk and just engage with other people. And Nobody sat down from their team. They stood up. They, <laughs> they the were like together. intense. They broke this thing down in like 11 minutes. Oh my gosh. How <laughs> many pieces were in the puzzle? Minutes. Yeah, it was wild. It was, but it was fun. And they were excited. And I saw them the next day at the show. And they were walking around and taking a look at the pens and fountain pens. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Things, so. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. That that's, really what, fun. that's what Esterbrook does is fun events. Because the year before that was Nib Wars between – four Nibmeisters, you know, and, and it had like, it's like Brian couldn't be there because he was ill that year, but yeah. yeah, but you know, there was a whole audience watching, you know, these Nibmeisters compete, you know, making their specialty nibs or another nib grind. And it was very cool. It was a lot was of fun. Home. I was home with COVID yeah, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm looking on my phone and I had this vision in my mind of what I wanted and how I wanted things to happen. And I'm texting everybody on my team. Yeah. <laughs> camera the camera's facing the wall like nobody's seeing what's going on and, yeah. he had his vision a little frustrating but it was great i heard people really enjoyed it i see the t-shirts josh was wearing his t-shirt in uh he was actually the victor um but he was yeah. wearing his t-shirt in baltimore so that's cool i still have the little tote bag yeah so i, I use it occasionally looks a good lunch bag and stuff so yeah, yeah that was fun <laughs> It's exhausting, though, to put together the events. It's a lot. Oh, I'm sure. So yeah. I'm curious to see what you'll do this year oh. for the DC event. Don't you, you got to top. Please, Every year me. you have to top the next one. So you're going to have to. The year before, we went to Top Golf. You remember that? We brought everyone out and we went to Top Golf with a bunch of like. I don't think I was there. I don't yeah. think I did that one. Yeah, it was fun. That is yeah, we, we try to do something different and, you know, bring people together and, you know, get them excited about being at the show and. You know, yeah, we try to do it in our in our little way. That's part of the Esterbrook magic, you know, like weaving in, weaving in the artist and the Americana and the the pen and the marketing and the people, and that's what makes you guys so special. Well, thank they you. Are special. They, they are special. They are very special. special. So, is yeah. there something in the other room that you wanted to get to show? You want me to get that? Yes. Of course. Right. I'll spray. <laughs> yes. Chop chop. <laughs> What's up, Vanessa? How you been? Good. Good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Is daylight savings kicking your ass or what? You know, I forgot about daylight savings. And then last night when I was like staring at the ceiling at quarter of one, I'm like, what am I <laughs> up so late? What is going on? Although I started a new book on my Kindle and it's kind of a thriller. So that was Ooh. also keeping me up. And then <laughs> having nightmares. And stuff. Yeah, I'm actually a little nervous. I'm glad Jay's not traveling this week. I'll put it. Oh that my way. goodness! Oh, it was one of the free downloads with Kindle Unlimited, and it's been really scary. It just took a turn. Yeah. Oh wait, what, what's the name of it? Because I don't know if I downloaded it. Or oh, not. the the hand. No, the watch handmade. Handmade. I always think of Handmaid's Tale. Hold on. Oh, okay. I'll have to look that up. Uh, cause I didn't get any of the books. They didn't seem appealing to me, but if you think that one's pretty good, I'll get it. This one had really good reviews too. Oh, okay. 
Okay. I will, I will share it with you. We're just trying to fill in the, yeah. <laughs> the moment when you ran to wherever it was. The downtime when we lost you. Yes. And I will, I will be in Utrecht this year so we can reassemble our little team. I'm of, hoping to be there too. So I hope you're there too. Uh, Lori is going I'm gonna be there. Oh, really? So yeah, nice. we're going to do a live broadcast from Oh, wow. uh, Utrecht. Yeah. Nice. So it Sounds would be exciting. nice. It would be nice to hang out with everybody. Thank you, Carmen. Again, have a few drinks, get our drink on. It's called oh, Housemaid. Vanessa. Housemaid. Okay. Housemaid. Gary, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, oh, we have some recommendations. Oh, okay. Everybody stop. What is this? Oh, that's the Accutron. Oh. So we have a great partnership with Accutron, which is also another American brand. They're yes. part of uh, Citizen Citizen Watch Group, and okay. their office is in um, the Empire State Building. Cool. I think a 32nd floor. Pretty amazing. You go up there, and they have all these different brands. Uh, mm. Frederick Constant, Accutron, Citizen. Um, there's, there's a number of different brands, but we work with Accutron and they, the first introduction, they were celebrating their 60th anniversary, uh, mm -hmm. of the company. And, uh, they wanted to, you know, make this announcement and partner with other brands. So they were seeking another American brand. So they tapped us and we created that wonderful pen that Vanessa has oh, there. Uh, that green pen. That loud does not. That loud, that loud does not have. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one. This is the new introduction based on their astronaut series. So we tried to reflect the idea of space. And so we chose Ebonite. So when you open it up, it has those are their tuning forks. And uh -huh. so this one is made from. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Whoa. That is very cool. And so on the ring, it says astronaut. So it's a, if you're familiar with our nebulous plume, from you know, the partner, partnership that we had with Ferris Wheel Press. Yeah. Uh, the tuning fork is on the nib. Oh, wow. cool. So it's cool. just just feels cool. It, it looks really looks shiny, cool. like the polishing yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. That looks really cool. So, People are going crazy in the comments over here. Yeah, so it's send, it, send it over here. Let me, let me take a closer look at it. <laughs> you were involved in the other... Uh, program right you did some great photography with this yeah yeah we did some cool stuff, stuff with a with an accutron watch so not, and the pen wow. unfortunately it's the process of manufacturing these have has been pretty pretty grueling um yeah. they're buying the roller balls because watch shops tend to buy roller balls they don't do a lot with fountain pens and then we're mm -hmm. going to have the fountain fountain pen version. So oh, I don't know how we're going to release it yet. The roll balls will come first because that's kind of been priority. So those will yeah. be out there soon. And then we're going to do something with the, um, with the fountain pen. So you'll see them soon. I, I don't know exactly when they're going to release, but here you had the first sneak peek and uh, that so. was wonderful. Thank you. Another juicy bras exclusive, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we bring you the that news. That's what Juicy I'm calling exclusive. Yes, we've yeah. had a couple on the sh on the show. Yeah, love it. Well, even yeah, when great. you shared the white Estes, that was well that deserved. was like you heard it here first, everybody. Yeah, very exciting. I <laughs> wanted to bring the sweet dream, but I don't have any here. I don't even have one. They're all out. I know. I would love to see how the packaging and all that turned out. Oh, so it's so. so fun. I saw the drawings for it or the. You know, we, when we first started this thing, everything was barter. You know, we were just like, yeah, people wanted to work and they were happy to exchange their work for pens. And, you know, that's how the partnership happened. And just recently we started working with um, like a creator or a real artist and designer uh, mm -hmm. to help us with our packaging designs and pull, draw inspiration in the storytelling. And she lives in Italy and she's a firecracker. She does really cool stuff. She's very creative and she's actually a, a master they call penman and so she, i initially went to work with her because she's a calligrapher and i thought maybe we could do something around that and then i learned that she worked with ferrari and pirelli and helped them with their logo and that wow. she has a specialty around accessories and i was like okay we need to speak a little bit more and so now we're working i know part of the um part of today's conversation was around pen storage and I'll say that we're designing something with her that is so dear to my heart and like really cool um, for pens that's totally different than anything we have. 
currently. Do you have like an example of that? No, no, no. Theme? It's like super early. Super oh, early. okay. Yeah. So it's still like in the, the conception stage. stages. Okay. As far as like quantity, like how many pens? Uh, there's going to be a mix. Okay. There's it's it's a particular shape that we decided on, and then this shape is going to have different uh, ways that it can function. So okay, yeah, that's really wow. because I always wow. find that when I'm traveling, the cases don't always work for me. Like I feel like I need other things, and I need to be able to see where those things are. I like transparencies. I like. I like pockets. Mm -hmm. I want to put my glasses and I have nowhere to put my glasses and my keys. I almost need a purse, but I do you need, need a, purse, a purse. But I'm not going to carry a purse. <laughs> so I wanted something for me, really. It's kind of selfish that I'm creating this thing, but the, no. the concept works really for everyone because I feel everyone, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to go to a pen show, maybe you want to put your pens in the case and maybe you want to put some other things that fit in there, whether it's pen related or okay. even just related to your accessories. So, I don't know. We're designing something that will I will it have a strap down. <laughs> will, will it have, have a strap? like a strap or anything like that, or it has, like a, a loop? It has that something you can... that's unique to a strap. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's not a strap. Mm -hmm. It's more oh, like a handle, but kind of like oh. a hidden handle. Yeah. Like a well, little I would briefcase say handle. Yeah. Just like a, a little slider. slider. Yeah. Oh, okay. That sounds yeah. really cool. Because you well, can something that you you had the concept for. I'm sure the the pains that you're feeling when you travel to pen yes. shows or the access yeah. that you want to He's your not alone yeah you're not alone yeah. so I'm sure even though it was selfish I think you're probably going to fill a void yeah I, yeah that's the idea it comes from a place where yeah I'm just there isn't something that I that's practical I've I've bought like the crossbody I bought those cool Japanese like crossbodies and that doesn't really work for me either um, because then I can't fold it up and put it away. And this item I, I'd like to be able to carry, but also be yeah. able to put it in my backpack, throw it in my luggage, and it could be used for many purposes. But the idea is that like when we design stuff, it's really for pen people. That is exciting. Excellent. Stuff. Yeah. That is exciting very stuff. exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's fun. And she's fun. And she listens. So like, you talk, she's like, oh, and I did this because you said that. And I was like, oh, yeah, I did say that. Very nice. Yeah, so she's she's really good. That's that very cool. How nice. This, this was oh, I'm very excited fun. about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you will, because I, I think you'll enjoy this. I think you'll appreciate it. Yeah, because we, Lori and just I, we're bag people. Bag. Yeah, we're bag people. Uh, you know, so Clearly. Clearly, we can, I mean, it, we can yeah. share it at the start. Like, I like yeah. transparent bags as well. I like she, to do and it. <laughs> she likes glass, yeah. very, very interesting <laughs> materials as well. So, well, actually, the pen case that I currently have, I don't know if it was from Muji pens, but it's like the clear acrylic. And then on penindustries.com, P E N N, I think that's that I saw it on somebody else's video. I ordered the little gray velvet little pen thing that you have to oh, custom nice. cut to put in the drawers. Hmm. Now I'm worried about the light yeah. that's hitting some of my pens because it's in the window upstairs that I had to move from and yes. the light shines down. You have to be careful. Yeah, so I've been looking in to Toyo Tool, Toyo, no. What is sure. the really nice Japanese? Yes, Toyo? Like $400 cases. The to oh, uh, the Toyo uh, Woodcraft. Toyo yeah, Woodcraft. I'm not thinking of the little, not the Esterbrook little Toyo box. Woodcraft, I think it's the company. Woodcraft maybe. They're just, I mean, not that I wouldn't invest in that because you spend that on a pen, so many of us. And, right. you know, so like I would certainly do that. But then I'm like, is there anything in between like this sure. $40 acrylic box and a $400 box that I'm kind of looking right. for like the hundred. Toyuka. 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 Thank you so much. I knew we were close. Yeah. Toyuka craft. Yuka. There it is. Yes. And they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. They're at a lot of the pen shows. Um, then and I they saw sell out fast. We sell fast. Like the first day, people are over at their space, and they're, you know, they're shipping these things in from from Japan. So it's quite expensive to attend a show, you know, in another country. I can imagine shipping in boxes. Like it's a lot, wow. but they sell wow. out fairly quick. And I noted the shipping is very expensive because I looked like look, looked into getting one, and I just and then Galen Leather has those trays. Yeah. That, that I think would be great, but I've never stackable. ever once seen them available. They're sold out yeah. every time I look. 
So Julia's with me. I'm right there with you. I'm in the market for the same type of storage. So yeah, I feel like there's got to be something, you know, maybe $200 or less range, maybe modular that you could add to it. Because I feel like, you know, I bought this case. I'm like, I will never need more than 50 pen case. Like once this yeah. fills up, I'm in a weird category <laughs> and I'm there, you know? So I, I, that's why I wanted to talk about pen storage, but you guys did have a 40 pen storage yeah. that is actually one. great. Fantastic. Maybe this I should just big thing. Yes. Hmm. Without being too bulky. We we were designing them for our like international distributors. And we're like, we we want to like they should represent us when they walk in. And we should actually have cases because we have these old cases from a company that we represented many years ago called Labelle. And we made these leather black cases. And they're hmm. just like not the script. They're not the most attractive things now. They've been beat up over the years. And I was like, we need something that's ours. So then we designed it really for us and our salespeople. And I'm like, I think people will buy these. Like, they're really cool. Like, they they feel different. They have like this wax canvas on them. Yeah, you, you can write on them with your fingernail. Yes. <laughs> so, you can write yes, Steve. Right? Like yeah, they're, S -S so they're, they're fun cases. And uh, they seem to be doing well. People like them. We bring them to all the pen shows and people are looking for another, um, you well, know, there's, there's a lot of the traditional leather ones that are out there and we just wanted to be a little bit different, not quite as um, luxurious to say. I mean, they are kind of luxurious. Yeah, but, but they're, sometimes they're, 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 I think they have a nice one, rugged quality no too. to me. These aren't yeah. stuffy at all. They're not, not at all. This one's my casual. favorite. I like, I like all of the, you know, the pockets. And the storage pockets is very thoughtful. Mm. That's really nice. Um, yeah, I mean, this, you know, you could fit a notebook in here or different accessories in here. And I just thought <clears throat> the whole thing was extremely thoughtful for people who like to carry pens. And it's not too bulky. I mean, you could put this in a bag, like a backpack or. Oh, right, right. I do so, like yeah. that. That's beautiful. That's a good one. I, I was more, I was more looking for something that would stay on my desk right. for some of yeah. the, you know, cause I feel like I'm always pulling into different cases. Um, mm -hmm. But something that was more stationary for like a collection, because I would also say it seems a trend with fountain pens is, is kind of, and I fall victim to the collector's mentality all the time. It's like a lifelong struggle for me, like to not get everything in the line or whatever. But I would, I feel like more people are just like adding to the collection. And then there's this debate like, well, how many pens is too many pens? And what is your threshold? And when is it too much? And Vanessa and I don't really talk about that much because we don't have, we don't have a limit. There's no limit. <laughs> Dangerous. But I think most people do or, or, you know, they try yeah, to. They should. I, yeah. I mean, you, you want to maintain it. You want it to stay special. And I also think that that is another thing with Esterbrook. I think a lot of people like a story attached to their pen, whether it's I bought this for an occasion like, you know, my husband bought me the Narwhal Cancun pen and we were in Mexico and that was really yeah. special for that occasion. Sure. But everybody kind of likes a story or most people do attached to their pens. And that is another thing with Esterbrook. So when you can bring the story into it, it already comes with a story. You know, you don't even have to create one. But I think a lot of people just get sucked in and we're buying so many pens that I think storage will continue to be a hot selling thing. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I, I definitely agree. And we had a gentleman here and we were designing this, this Kate, this kind of tray that we can use to present the pens like in a more uh, pleasant way, especially at Yoseka, like, or even at mm. the, the pen shows, like yeah. we put them in the cases and people just have at it. They look inside and then they're, they're testing them and trying them. And we have these nooks that. Oh yeah. Know, those are pretty kind cool. Of like those. Yeah. And then I bring this one to the show and I don't sell it. And every show, everybody's like, no, but I want that one. I want that one. <laughs> No, that one's not for sale. Ooh, like, that one's yeah, really cool. That's a nice one. On and, you know, two different colors. And that's Is that cool. a prototype? What's that? It's, Was a, that prototype. A, it's yeah, a prototype. It's a prototype. But we bring it to the show and we present that way. Uh, but I feel like I want a, a more elegant environment, you know, where it's cleaner. Um, and something that we can put in the shops as well, which mm -hmm. isn't <laughs> so many different doors at a door like 
Boston General Store and Yoseka and some store in France. Like, how do you present the brand there? So we're always challenged with these with these thoughts. Like you see these big brands and they can do it because they have like a huge space behind them and drawers and cabinets. And that's not us. Like we're in pens. Like we're we're much smaller than these big watch companies or even travelers. Travelers will take over a whole space. They're right. They have 200 employees in wow. Japan, like manufacturing yeah. different products. So you know, step by step, I feel if we can just build a tray and then expand from the tray and then maybe we'll have accessories and some other cool things down the road. You know, That's we just true. want we want to grow the fountain pen community. And, you know, you're doing the it. reasons you're explaining is like, how many pens can people have? And we're like, we, have to, we need to grow. We need to grow beyond this space. And that's why we need men to buy our pens. That's why we watch people to buy our pens and bullet journalers and, and mm -hmm, all yeah. different walks, you know, people who are just curious about writing. And it's also nice that you include things like the wooden stamps mm -hmm. and the candles and the water bottle yeah, that came fun. with the raven. Like you do kind of build around it. And the the Toyo box mm -hmm. in that green Esterbrook, I got that too. I love that. That's a beautiful color. That was a great partnership. We, uh, Vanessa had talked about those boxes on the show for a while. Ooh. And then, yeah. There's nothing in it. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I was at a show in Germany at uh, Paper World and I'm walking past this booth. I'm like, wow, those are really cool. I like, I like those. And Carrie goes, you haven't seen those before? You know, Carrie, uh, Fountain Pen, <laughs> he, he works with us. He goes, you haven't seen those before? I'm like, no. And then he introduced me. I went over, spoke to this gentleman. He was from France and now he's our distributor. So they have travelers, they have Toyo box. And he introduced me to the people at Toyo. And I was like, yeah, I mean, anything Japanese we want to be associated with because the Japanese just do things so they fun. do it right everything <laughs> yeah. is just like their quality is terrific I mean Sailor yeah. and and you know Platinum I mean these are great brands and so now we're going to do something with the superior labor and we have some other stuff I'm so, so excited something exciting cool. for people too so that's oh my gosh that's, that's um, do you have any timeline on the superior labor yeah. Uh, Yoseka, I think, is one we're going to. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's. it's they're going to be there. They're doing workshops at yeah. Stationary Fest. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, a lot of fun. Good, good stuff fun. coming. All right. Well, I want to be respectful of your time. I know you said five o'clock and you've already chatted extra yeah, with that's us. Very good. I Brian, thank it. you so, so much for joining us on the show. Yeah, You're welcome back fun. to the Juicy Garage right. show anytime. Thank you much. And. Why don't we why don't we give away a couple of those cases tomorrow? So if you guys come up with it, we could put it on your Instagram and we could have a little contest and we're happy to give away to some of the people who you know graciously gave us their time today. So Oh, um, fantastic. Okay. Maybe we'll do one on and gang. We'll do one on Vanessa and we'll do one on time with Tata and we could Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out. Vanessa hey, and yeah. I will walk in. I got you guys. So yeah, that I'll sounds take care. Great. Thanks so much. Brian, great. thank you so much for being Thank you Brian here. for really coming on. It. All right. Awesome. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. See you later. It's going to... Aw, that was so nice. That was... Ooh, what do we think? <laughs> I don't know, but it was like... This is, new, this is the new view that I discovered last week because I feel like we're always here. Yeah. And then it's I'm like, like woo! No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know. It's a little... I'm still... My eyes are still puffy from daylight savings, so I think I need a yeah. little space. Um, wasn't oh, that, that was great? Yeah, I, you know, what a nice guy. It's nice, and and you know, Esterbrook. I, I'm always very excited about Esterbrook products and all the collaborations that they always end up doing. You know, it's like, I mean, guys, the superior labor. I know it's. <laughs> it is really an exciting okay. time to be a part of this community. To see, yeah, the totally, and the excitement. Totally. I mean, I know I'm a relative relatively a newbie to the hobby but i i just like see all of these connections being made and relationships built and it's really pretty exciting for me well yeah just just five years ago it wasn't like this you know so um yeah it's really cool to see all these these different collaborations and and i think it's awesome i think it brings you know pen people like us lots of special collecting type of stuff you know and um yeah things to look forward to and then so everybody we to. share our ideas and yeah um, or, or just like seeing people share their layouts with their pens or 
Right. I mean, I can't tell you how many bottles of inks I've purchased after just seeing it in someone's Instagram feed. I'm saying, so same. You know? yeah, I'm yeah. the same. I will see somebody's pen. I'm like, what pen is that? Actually, you showed a pen today, and I think it was Carmen, who's in the chat, sent oh. it to me. And I was like, what? This these one pens is just appear on Vanessa's doorstep. <laughs> She's, this is so pretty. And it's called cappuccino. It's like right, oh. It's so pretty. You're we you're muted. Are you muted? Did you hit mute? I Where'd think I go? did by accident. Was your well, dog barking? Well, earlier, yes. Okay. Earlier the dogs were barking, so I, I didn't want, you know, that to uh bother Brian while he was talking. So I, I muted the dogs. They were like losing their minds over oh. who knows what. So I just want to say happy birthday, Kate. Her pen came oh. in that one from Bart. Happy Kate, birthday. Last week when Bart was on the show, he was like listening to us and working on Kate's birthday pen. And I think that's her third Zodiac pen. If I'm wow. Not <laughs> yeah. So she's then, a fan. Yes, she is a fan. Uh, I got like five bottles of ink today. <laughs> <laughs> were you were you influenced from people on on yeah this, yeah do you get influenced by the gram you know you're scrolling through there yeah, and you're like oh, oh like, that's gorgeous i would be i would have way more money in my bank account if it weren't for instagram oh but my I'm, not gosh. Sad. I'm not sad it's a fun little thing so share with us now that your volume okay is so yeah i didn't realize i was still <laughs> i'm gonna bring us in close now so you can show the pen up close <laughs> here it is Actually, let me just do you. Can I do you? I don't know. Oh, you're going to give me center stage again? I would love to if I could figure it out. Solo layout. If I go like this and then do solo. There's no, not you. me. No. I don't know All right. I don't know how. That's oh, fine. Is... Okay, go ahead. I'll just be quiet. Here, I just stay in the whole <laughs> influencer. It's showing you my pen. <laughs> Influence us, <laughs> Vanessa. Okay. And you know, I'm not an intentional influencer. You know, all this started just because I felt like I needed a place to show my stuff and to take photos and, and to put it there and to show my art. That's all this is about. But your passion comes through. And that's, that's what I'm just passionate. Influence people because you get us excited it's about just, stuff. Well, because I'm, I'm excited. I get excited. So you yeah, share just, your excitement. I just got this. So Joya, I have a relationship with Joya. I've had a relationship with them for a couple of years now. Um, and these are one of these companies who contacted me out of the blue, small company in Naples. And so they sent over this, this is called a Meti, M-E-T-I-S. And then this pen actually comes in all kinds of different um, finishes. So this resin is called Cappuccino. I think I'm so, calling it's kind of a gray blue with tan so and white and the tan is really pretty. It has um, a little bit of shimmer in it. Mm. So yeah, it's extra special. The and so I, was beautiful today. Yeah. I inked it with KWZ ink and uh, in Oscar. It's exclusive to Fanta Plumo over in Delft, mm. which is where I got that bottle of ink at last yeah. year <laughs> in the Netherlands. Um, so yeah, it's nice. This is different from what they normally have offers uh, from Joya, but it's got a nice stainless steel nib on it. It's a piston filler. Gorgeous. Um, extremely comfortable. In fact, I did a little writing with it earlier today um, and it was very comfortable. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It doesn't post. So when it posts, and I did post it on the demo video from earlier today, I was just like, is it massive? Like you just got to. <laughs> yeah. It's like a baseball bat. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, that's not going to work for me. So yeah, this is, I don't think you need. No, to it looks like kind of a beefy pen without yeah. posting for sure. Yeah, It like doesn't need to be posted. So, but yeah, it's very, very nice. I, I like this company. I don't own any of their pens, but I've admired like, like a cream colored pen and they have like blue accents or maroon uh -huh. or, or like the Italian flag. I feel like I've yes, seen orange and red, flag. red and green before. Yeah. yeah, that does look different. I'm not yes, like, I don't know much about them, but. They're a very small company. I love, um, love that pen. They were with a distributor at one time. Uh, they were with luxury brands, but I guess things didn't work out. 
Um, so now they just are independent. So I don't know if they're looking for another distributor or not at this time. And you can you find distribute their pens. For yeah, them. I'll start distributing it. Yeah. <laughs> We can show Apple them. Apple them actually has this one in stock. I looked. Yeah, I saw up. that on your. And on um, let's see for at Apple Boom, I wrote this down because I'm probably going to be doing the review later, re recording a review for it later this week. But Good. over at Apple Boom, you can get this for about 140 dollars. Not bad. No. Not bad. It's not bad. And then Pen Chalet had this pen in other resins, and I believe they're on sale for 119. Wow. So. Wow. If you guys are interested, it's a very nice Italian pen. Beautiful. Um, well, yeah. thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, that was really exciting when I saw You're that. Welcome. And it was weird because because Carmen had DM'd me about it. My friend, well, Karina had DM'd me and asked me if I got the SD, the white SD. And I said, I caved. And then she said, I'm holding <laughs> out for this pen. And she showed me a pen she was looking at. And then I said, oh, that's beautiful. And then Carmen had messaged me. So I showed Karina that pen. I'm like, this is really pretty. And then the next day, there Vanessa was displaying it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe Vanessa has that pen. I have, it's like I can read, I can read your minds. Yeah, that's exactly I just, what you I did. know what's up. I'm like, I'd love to see how this pen works. And then I opened Instagram and Vanessa. And there like, it is. Let I'm like, you. let me show you how it works. Let me show you this pen. <laughs> Yeah, it's really nice. I oh. I I really like Joya's pens. Um, they're very solid, and uh, the build is really good. And I didn't, this this pen it's very attractive. It's beautiful. It's I really love nice. this. Yeah. I was not surprised to hear. Um, I, I, I was interested. I thought it was interesting that Brian mentioned how they are moving towards some neutral colors. Um, I you know that really surprised me. I how it um, surprised you. Why did that surprise you? Because they've been doing so much color in the past. I mean, they started off with more subdued colors and then they went into more color. Mm -hmm. And it's like now they're taking a step back. Is that where pens are trending right now into more subdued colors? I'm a bad person to ask because I've always favored neutrals. Um, I think in terms of, for me, when I think in terms of investing in a pen that mm -hmm. I'm going to use for a very long time, if I have to choose between a really bright, loud, in-your-face pen or something subtle, if it's if it's expensive, it's, it's almost like a, buying a leather purse for me. Like if I'm going to invest in a bag, I'm likely right. to spend more money on the classic color and style like camel or black or like the safe colors. Right. And then maybe I would, you know, have fun with something that was a little bit more trendy and a punch of color or something that I might not love so much in five years, but I love it right now, but I don't want to spend that much money on it. So when I, I think in terms of what I would spend on a classic, I tend to lean towards the more um, subdued. But I mean, I feel like Esterbrook Estes are in that price point where you can uh -huh. have fun with it. They're, they're, they're expensive for a steel nib, but they're still beautiful. And I love the quality and I love the size. So I would still buy a fun pen. But then when I think of what I'm going to spend a lot of money on, I tend to go more neutral. Okay. No, I, I, I get that. And I, 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 I think of that in the same way, like as in bags, but you know, once I have all the neutrals, it's like now, now it's time to bring. Now it's up. time to have some fun. Yeah, every, every, <laughs> I'm hearing everyone's. I would get go in your face. It's easier to find. That is true. Yeah, I can't believe I managed to catch. Oh, well, welcome, Roxy. Roxy. <laughs> oh, not me. Colors. Okay, yeah, see, I, color. I'm in the minority here. I, I'm not saying I want like a black, boring pen, but yeah. I think, but I think like the like think the coffee color. Thing. like that one like the cappuccino right it has the blue but it also has like the the lighter beige colors in it um right I like that. I love that it's a lot definitely more on the neutral side I would that. never pick up a neutral we have some passion look at this wow a lot see? of people see it? yeah no so a lot of people about, something about going more neutral you I'm sure you guys were like me are like what what? But I think they have a lot of the bright colors in their line and they don't necessarily yeah. have like they don't have like a coffee colored pen. 
Uh, um, at Estabrook. No, yeah, I guess they don't. Well, they had the yeah. rose, the um, the 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 J. They had the green, and then I think it was called Pinky Rosa or something. But yeah, it was a- antique rose or antique rose, but it was antique essentially rose. brown. But it was brown, right? Right. Yeah. So um, I don't know. Maybe that's you know that's something to pay attention to if that's what you know where the, where things are trending in that direction. So I'm, now I'm kind of curious. So I have to pay attention to what these new releases are because that that um, the platinum the chai latte or whatever is very neutral. Very neutral. You know where, where before they were doing all these you know their limited editions were like these turquoises and you know different colors like that. So that is a very subdued color combo so maybe that's what's trending but then like i gotta say like my leonardo's i have some really bright colors with leonardo and i really love that i also feel like when i think in terms of japanese pens i think Uh more neutral more subdued and then when i think of my italian pens that's when i want the color so i think it also for me depends on the brand as well i think yeah you know i could i can agree with that because yeah when i think of japanese i think you know more conservative, you know, uh, you know, not taking as many chances with, you know, colors and shapes. And then you look at uh, the Italian pens and they're just like, hey, let, why don't we try this crazy shape and, and put a bunch of it. color with it, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, and it works I do it's that. fun. So I think that's also why I can, I, I don't think I could ever be the type of collector that stuck to one brand or one, like one nib size or one ink, like as much as I do favor those neutrals, I, if that's all I had, I wouldn't be happy. Like I I like my colors too. You gotta gotta shake it up a little bit. You know, it gets boring after, after a couple, you know, sometimes you just need a little hot pink. That one is really collection, you know, I know we need to work on our pen and it's going to be interesting to work on something and find, that balance <laughs> with Banu, especially if we can, if we can work with Banu, that would be really oh, fun. Yeah. I mean, Esterbrook would be a dream. Yeah. I think Esterbrook, I don't know. That's a little, I, know, I mean, we can, I can always, can always pick Brian's brain and see what he says about it. Yeah. But they don't, I've never seen, well, with the exception of like Ferris Bull press. I mean, I haven't like, I've, I've like, what am I trying to say here? Like Aziza had her pen with Banu, right? right? And yeah. then um, like SBR Brown had a pen with Leonardo. Right. I feel like there's, but I've never seen Estabrook do one with like like a channel or a personality or something like that. You know, no. they work with the big brands, you know? We, we could be the first. Well. <laughs> so, we, yeah, we'll have to see. We never know. We'll, we'll have just to wait and now. see. Just pick his brain and see what he has to say about it. Yes, I would agree, Sabine. Charmaine has the talent to find very nice Japanese fountain pens, which are not. She has a nice collection. She has a beautiful eye. Yes, she has a beautiful collection. I would agree. Um, I love the new SD, but the gold trim kept me from pulling the trigger. I would have been all over the silver or rhodium trim. And I love the gold. Yeah. I like it all. Yeah. (laughs) Waiting for my tortoise SD to wrap. Oh, that's a nice classic. I love that. That's a nice classic pen. Yes. Yes, yes. Well, uh, everyone, so we have some colorful people here. Well, yeah. Well, it's interesting. That was a really fun conversation. So we will let you all know our plan for the, that was so nice of Brian. He mentioned it to us before we went live that he wanted to figure out a way to give away two cases to our audience. So this will be really fun. Um, We'll, we'll talk about it, but we will keep you posted on Instagram on how to win an Esterbrook case. I have a, I have my March um, currently inked video going live tonight. I I I just have to do my thumbnail, but that will probably be up in about an hour and a half. Uh, which I'm I'm not very good about doing currently inks, but I managed to do yeah. one for month. So, and you are going to have you're going to do a review on that pen later. I am. This I'm going to. I'm hoping to film a review of the the, the new Joya pen and uh, hopefully have that up by this weekend. Awesome. I if not, forward. then maybe next week. I don't know. I <laughs> um, oh, this is someone said 
Benu red lips, glasses, wavy hair, straight hair, and mini pens. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a juicy broad pen? That sounds fun. <laughs> Uh, Jeffrey is a currently inked dropout. I, I kind of do a little um, disclaimer at the beginning of my video that I, I, I'm usually, it's more like my March palette, my March inspiration. I don't, I don't really stick to it, but I, so I, I've never gotten into the currently inked. I mean, I have like, and I, I think I wrote this to Jeffrey yesterday because I, he was, uh, he showed the, you know, the, the ink, the pen diet or whatever. And I was like, pen diet. I was like, I think I've easily got about 30 pens inked right here that, you know, because I just ink them and start writing with them. And, you know, I, I kind of write with whatever moves me in the moment. So, yeah, yeah. I, I like feature 13 pens in this video, but I have so many others linked, inked up. Like I have all of my Esther books inked up yeah. here. And then I have like my journaling pens that are always inked up. Like I just can't, I just can't do it. But I do like the idea of like what's inspiring me this month. And then one pen in particular that I was really excited about was my um, Sailor Shikiori fifth anniversary pen. Uh -huh. That was like literally had ink from God knows when. And it took me forever to clean it out. And that's why <laughs> but that was a good one. Like I'm like, oh, this is a pretty spring pen. What ink can I put in this? Because it yeah. came with an ink that I like in another pen, but I don't love it in that pen. So I kind of on camera said, let me go with this ink. And it turned out to be really nice. So I like, I like that the thought of a currently inked palette kind of pushes me to like look at different pens at, uh -huh. because I sometimes reach for the same ones over and over. So we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Out. You know what? I could, I can, uh, I could see that, you know, having the same ones inked over and over again. Yeah, I can I can get yeah. in, in a rut, you know, so that was <laughs> Well, thank you everyone crazy. for being here. Do you have any parting thoughts, Vanessa? Anything else you want to share before we say goodbye? Hmm. Oh, we have a question for you. How's that? Oh, I see that. That is um, wax silk cream that I picked up at Pap Papier Plume a store in New Orleans, uh, mm -hmm. you can, they have a online store and it's great because you, you put it on the wax seal and it dries and it stays put and the cost is under, it's under 10 bucks. I want to say it's something like seven or $8. Beautiful. So it's, that's what oh, does really like good. the, that you put like on a little eyeshadow thing and you, yeah, do the yeah that's yeah, beautiful. It's, it's great stuff. I love it. Like I won't use anything else. Oh, this is a this is a big question for saying goodbye. Oh, thanks, Juicy Broads. Oh, you're welcome, Wendy Sue. Thank you. Joey wants to know what are your thoughts on the Pilot Custom Eight Two Three. It's a nice I, classic. I love can't it. Go, it's can't go wrong with it. See, now that's a pen that I'd like to see more color with because me too. Because it's, it's such a, great a beautiful pen. writer. I have the amber. I don't really have any desire for the that's smoke, what, the black. Yeah, I have the amber as well. But it's like, yeah, I would love to see that in fashion colors. That would be really exciting. I mean, why are they not doing it? They're so extreme. I mean, I think that's just it. It's so extreme that that's, that is such a classic pen. I think people would be all over. Well, they oh, did yeah. that in North America 743 with yeah. the, that teal green, right. which and that has a cartridge converter, which is nice as well. I haven't bought that yet. Um, but I was just talking to Lau about it because he got it with a Falcon nib and I've, I've never used a Falcon nib. Oh yeah. You um, need to try a Falcon nib. Those are nice. Exciting. Why? Thank you, David. <laughs> thank you. I try. Oh, all right, everyone. Thank you. Uh, looks faster than using a pen. What's that? I think I missed something. Thank you all. Mwah, mwah. We love you. Thank so you much. for tuning we'll in. I hope you next monday do we have yeah. guests next monday i don't know vanessa's got quite a lineup for us uh i don't know but i can i could easily get a guest on next week or if you guys just want to see us do our thing or talk talk uh, can't talk talk topics talk, talk hot topics uh hot let, us, topic. let us know feel free to shoot you know shoot me a message shoot Lori a message of what you would like to see here but i we could definitely bring on another guest no problem Absolutely. All right, friends. Well, thank you all so much. Stay juicy, bitches. Stay juicy, bitches. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Love you. <laughs>